Hi, today I will show you three techniques to solve this problem. And these three techniques can be combined, of course, but I have chosen three problems that need only one technique and that are very easily solved if you use that technique. So we will start by this one, which look uh, very complicated, but it's easy in fact, but we can make it even easier. So basically you have a list of items and you have to reorder the list as such that you can go from one item to the next with changing only one uh, letter. So in the example I crafted you have a double A then the next item is AB so we did only change one letter it's the A the A become the B, then we have the AB which become BB, so we change the left A to B, then BB becomes BA, and we change the right must B, and BA become AA, so we change on the left must B. And you can see that we cyclic through all the items and come back to the first one. And the goal is to do the same with that list, which is a, a bit bigger and so it's a bit more complex and to do it we have to find a method which make the problem trivial and here if we are working with letter like that we are not used to that and it will take some time because we will have to go by trial and error and it's not the good way for this one so I will show you or you can make it very easily. So the first thing we have to see is that we are traveling something. We are traveling a list and it there are with item. So if you are traveling something, you are mostly dealing with a hidden graph somewhere. So if you can make a graph of it, it will make your life very simpler. So here we have uh, eight uh, items because I didn't repeat the triple A like I did here. So I uh, I will uh, draw some dots. And these that are not really draw uh, at random because I I did lay out the graph uh, to make it even easier. So let's go to label the graph. Uh, I will reduce a bit the fonts because we don't need. Uh, Voilà. randomly too so I, I use a, a method to label it and uh, I did it okay I will make all the label and I will reorder them uh, after that is now I have all my labels and my dots and now I should connect uh, the dots by respecting the consign here so I can connect AAA to AAB because there is only one letter change but I can't connect AAA to BBB because there is more than one letter to change but uh, this one, these two they are 
this one and this one can be connected because only the A change it into B. But uh, I will make the problem even easier by doing a little trick. As you can see, we have uh, A A A here, and I will make I will put it on the bottom. Then, if I go right, I change the last letter. So it will become A A B. And if I go up, I change the second letter. The second doc A A B. Uh, A B A, sorry. Ah, that's the one. And now, that point is right and up. So it's A A B. A B B, sorry. That is, and now you can see that if I connect the dots, and I will do, it's a square, and now I will add a depth, that is that if I go in diagonal like this, diagonal like this then I change the last the first letter sorry. so that means that a b a become b b a which is obviously here then if I have uh, a b b becomes b b b And if I have uh, AAA, it becomes BAA. And AAB becomes BAB. And I have my list, which is uh, on the graph. Now I will connect uh, the remaining lines. And you should see that I am following the rules. Huh? So you can recognize a cube. And now the problem is to navigate the the mesh. I'll try to make it. So I have to go from this corner, do a trip, and come back here. And so it can be quite easily done. If I do, I go right, I go up, I go left, I go. And I can navigate the cube like that. And as you can see, I didn't care about the labels because. I only have to care that I visit each vertex once, and now I can uh, read the label. So either I go that way or that way, and I have the session. So the list is A A A A A B A B B A B A B B A B B B B A B B A A, and we go back to A A. And there is uh, another solution when you go there by there. Or by the see, so you have basically at least three solution for this one. So we managed to solve it by simply drawing a cube, which is quite good. Now uh, I will show you another problem which requires another techniques. That's the uh, counting problem. The counting problem are the most uh, hard problem because uh, you have to think for each one uh, but you can simplify them. Here we have three dominoes that's uh, like dominoes so they are only printed on one fa face so if you flip them they are blank but you can rotate them and it makes another triomino. So here uh, I show two triomino that are distinct because you should have to flip them to obtain the other, but 
you can't so you can only rotate them so only this is permitted uh, with Triamino so that's it and the goal is to cone them and it may seem a bit hard but it's, it's very easy and to solve this kind of problem we have to segment it so we will make the partition of the problem and solve each partition independently so we start by uh, by looking how we can partition it and it's quite trivial because you can see it as being um, a set of numbers of three digit numbers and you can cut so partition the set in three parts the one where you have three distinct three three times the same number sorry the ones with only two numbers on it and the ones with three distinct number so basically we you have these three sets which makes the whole set and you can see that they are they aren't overlapping if we say that a b and c are three distinct number and now it's quite easy to count them because we know that there is only three possibilities for the first set because there is three number and the question is really how many number the next one you know that you have three number to choose from for a and one for b so that's that is six two times three or three times two because we have three choice for the first one and only two for the next one and now here we have three choice one choice uh, two choice one choice so it's also six but this one is a little trickier because as you, c as you saw if I if I wrote uh, one number here let's say I will say 3 then I can put a 2 and a 1 so we have 3 2 1 but this second can be rotated and give 2 1 3 as you can see I did only shift all the digit and that means that we can uh, we cannot have this one in the in the list because it's the same as this one we did rotate it uh, so we can here we didn't uh, have to because there is two of two times one digit and one time the other so you can rotate them uh, but here each we have only each of each digit so when we rotate them the B becomes the A the C becomes the B and the A becomes the C so you see that we are repeating here so um, to solve that one you can list them uh, quite easily so that means that you have 3 to 1 2 1 2 and now you if you rotate them you have this so you see that in fact there is only two two uh, of this kind because I will uh, make the full list because basically uh, you, you will iterate on the six possibilities so and this we have only two and that makes 11 for the total so th this is the most difficult case but it's quite easy to uh, to get it and the last problem is uh, a mod a more and on one that's that kind of puzzle so you have a, a cube on a grid and you can move it and the goal is to color all the faces and most people I know uh, when I ask them to solve it they, they, they pick face at random and they say ah I have to memorize uh, which faces are colored or not on the cubes and to navigate uh, 
the, the grades accordingly. And it's a very, very, very took uh, process, and I can't solve it th that way. So the um, trick is to think which and when is this easy to solve. Is there cases where the problem is trivial? And if you can say yes, then you have to find how to how to start with uh, this kind of problem. So here. Uh, the um, the trick is to build the net of the cube, and then when you have the net, you can easily paint the face. So that means that I will show you how it goes. Uh, so this is a valid net of cube and now I know that if I will uh, navigate it I will build the cube. Yes, it's, a, it's a rough belt so to show you here is another problem. So starting this position is not too good so I will first make the net. What, um, so here it is now I am I have an easy problem and I can build the cube. So you see that what uh, I did here is nothing like I did before. I did simply seek about a simple sit setting situation. And okay, I know that if I have the net, it's easy to solve. So if I want to solve it easily, I have first to go to build the net and then going from the net it's easy to solve. That is and you can uh, use the three techniques at the same time on the same problem. Uh, for example you can divide a problem in two partitions or smaller parts you can solve using these strategies and you can do it for each new problem you have uh, doing so. So and that means that a very, very complex problem can be quite easy at the end because you can split it in easier and easier and easier problem. That's only that it will grow in length, but it's easier to solve a lengthy problem than a very small one which is very took. So that's it. Thank you for uh, listening and goodbye. Yeah.